All right, so there's been a ton of chatter about the Brendan Schaub, Nate Diaz beef lately that revolves around Brendan standing up for Shane Carwin's struggles with CTE. And yes, I do think that the beef between these two guys is extremely entertaining, and I'll discuss it a little bit throughout this video, but the more that I've been watching this saga unfold, and the more that I've been watching Schaub milk content and clicks and views off of his friendship with Carwin, I keep wondering when someone's actually going to mention the fact that Shane hasn't considered Brendan to be one of his friends for years, so I guess that this is going to be my cross to bear. I personally find this whole situation so utterly baffling, and in this video, I'm going to give you guys my completely meaningless opinion on what I think is going on here. However, of course, in a video like this where there's so many conflicting messages, I have to provide some context, but I promise that I'll keep it short. So last week, Schaub uploaded a podcast episode to his YouTube channel where he spread the news that Carwin was suffering from CTE symptoms, and let's just say that things got a little bit emotional. That's all because of Shane. He's like a brother, man. Love that dude to death. He can't even keep a job. Bob, dude it's that bad right now yeah he he went from being a, a engineer you know to he, he, he can't be a bouncer at a at a fucking bar shane's in the thick of it man there's nothing we can do i face serious challenges and meaning basic everyday expenses for food shelter <laughs> here's a wife i don't know if she passed away you know, she, had, she has cancer, stage whatever, four or five cancer, I don't know the fucking degrees. Then in response, earlier this week, Nate Diaz tweeted this, where he calls Brendan a pussy for crying on camera, which I honestly think was a little bit unnecessary, but at the same time, it's Nate. It's not like he's really known for his rationality and his reasoning. Then on Monday, Brendan responds to this five-word tweet by opening up his podcast with a 20-minute rant where he tries to take the high road while he simultaneously tries to egg Nate on to pull up and fight him. Uh, not a long rant here. And he put, uh, Brendan the big old pussy shop with a crying emoji. Every fucking day of the week, 365 days a year, I will snap his fucking neck. But the difference between you and I, if you start crying because your brother who has CT, the difference between you and I is if your brother, and Shane's a brother to me, what are you gonna do? Volume punch me, motherfucker? Like, if this tweet was able to get this sort of response out of Brendan, could you imagine if Nate was actually able to write in full sentences? We could have gotten an hour-long meltdown, and frankly, I'm a bit disappointed that we were robbed of it, but who knows? Seeing as Diaz just made another tweet at Brendan, maybe we will get to see him throw an hour-long temper tantrum sooner than later. Anyways, now that we're caught up to speed, I think it's pivotal for everyone that's been following along with Shab's virtue signaling of Carwin's condition to know Know that not only did Shane outright say in 2016 that he doesn't view Brendan as one of his friends, he also seems to hold a bit of disdain towards him as well. So both of the posts that I'm about to show you were written by Shane himself, and the first one that I'm going to present is when he responded to Shab insinuating that he wouldn't be able to pass a USADA drug test. At this point in time, Carwin just recently announced that he was coming out of retirement, and Brendan made an offhand reference on his podcast that he was doubtful that he'd be able to get past USADA. And look, do I think that Carwin was on on the sauce while he was fighting? Probably, but that's really not the point here for this video because I want to focus on the very obvious resentful tone that Carwin takes with Brendan throughout this post. I mean, even in the first paragraph, it definitely feels like he's making a not-so-subtle accusation that Brendan himself was using steroids when he says that he knows my track record and I know his. I am not sure that this is what he wants to talk about. And then he immediately follows this up by airing out how he used to beat up Shab in sparring for rounds at a time. And in the final two paragraphs, he doesn't even try to hide that he thinks that Brendan is a fake person surrounded by even more fake people, which I would say is pretty spot on. Yeah, definitely doesn't seem like Shane held Brendan in high regard at this point in their history. And of course, Carwin didn't take very kindly to Shaw putting his ability to pass a drug test into question, which in all honesty is not unreasonable to speculate over when it comes to Shane. But I really think that Carwin went for the jugular at the end of this post, and I gotta say, when he says that Brendan likes to insult people while trying to cover it up with bullshit praise, it's totally spot on, and this is still one of Shab's favorite moves in his playbook to this day. And if you're not convinced of Brendan playing up his relationship with Shane for views yet, then I will present to you this post that Carwin made on the MMA Underground when he comes out swinging by saying that he and Shab haven't been friends for years. And he makes it a point to say that even in 2016, he noticed Brendan exaggerating their friendship. Then Shane hammers this point home when in the last sentence of his second paragraph, he asks why Brendan insists on pretending their relationship is 
something that it wasn't? Like, do you guys see what I'm saying yet? Shab has been lying about his friendship with Carwin for damn near a decade, and even Shane thinks it's weird. And then he says that when he went through his divorce, Brendan didn't bother to call or reach out to check in on him, and this really seems to have stuck with Carwin seeing as he publicly reveals it here. And yeah, the very last paragraph is just him iterating for a third time that Brendan is not his friend, just to completely quell any doubts for those who might be convinced by Shab's bizarre storytelling. Now, those of you watching might be saying that Carwin's posts were made in 2016, and there's a very real possibility that Brendan and Shane reconnected in recent years and became buddies again, but I don't think that this is the case, seeing as Brendan doesn't even know basic facts about Carwin's personal life that an actual friend would definitely know. First of all, Brendan doesn't even know that Carwin is divorced, which as we know by now happened years ago. In Brendan's podcast, he says that Shane has a wife, present tense, but as we just learned, he does not have a wife in present tense, does he? Here's a wife, I don't know if she passed away. You know, she had, she has cancer, stage whatever, four or five cancer, I don't know the fucking degrees. And trust me, I did as much research as possible to see if he ever got remarried, and everything that I've seen indicates that he never did. The last thing that I could find on his marriage status was that he got married to Lonnie Carwin in 2010 and they have kids together, but this marriage was the divorce that he was referring to in 2016. Carwin even references his divorce with Lonnie in around 2017 when he started selling shirts to help pay for the alimony. After that, there's literally nothing that indicates that he ever got remarried, but maybe Brendan knows something that we don't? And then Brendan mentions in his podcast that his wife has stage 4 cancer, but he doesn't know if she's still alive? Like, what the hell, dude? Brendan calls Shane his brother in the Nate response video. How does he not know if his brother's wife is alive or not? Like, I have friends that I haven't spoken to in years that honestly, I probably don't even consider friends anymore, and I know if their spouses are alive or dead. And some of you might be saying that Shab still considers Shane to be his friend, even if the feeling isn't mutual, and of course this could be the case but I doubt it. Let me put it to you this way. Do you think that Brendan knows that Brian Callen is divorced? Do you think that Brendan knows if Joe Rogan's wife is alive or dead? The answer to both of those questions is yes, because he's actually friends with them, because he actually makes it a point to maintain a relationship with them, unlike Carwin. I'm sure you guys know what I'm getting at by this point, so I'm just gonna come right out and say it. I personally think that Shab is taking advantage of his past connection with Carwin just to stir up views on his YouTube channel. And yes, I do feel a little bit bad for saying this, because it's a terrible thing to accuse someone of doing, but I really do think that that is what's happening here. I really do. And when it comes to his beef with Nate, Shab can hide behind his paper-thin shield of championing for Carwin's well-being all he wants, but as the old saying goes, actions speak louder than words. But the thing is, Shab's words aren't even all that convincing, seeing as he doesn't even know basic details about this guy that he claims to be a close personal friend. And if Brendan actually wanted to help Shane, then why doesn't he actually do something about it instead of getting into online beefs with other 40-year-old men? Like, is Brendan going to donate the ad revenue that he made from either of his videos that have to do with Shane directly to him and his family? I'm sure he can, I'm sure he could, but has he? Will he? And I totally get that Brendan might be doing the right thing for the wrong reasons, or maybe he's doing the wrong thing for the right reasons, I'm not too sure. But ultimately, just based on all of the things that I've talked about in this video, I just don't believe that Shab is being sincere when it comes to his concern towards Carwin. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Brendan is in the wrong for falling out of being friends with Shane, what is is wrong, however, is him exploiting Carwin's current condition for content and views. And of course, I can't prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that what I'm saying is actually the truth. This is obviously just my opinion, but I feel like I'm right, I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, that's the video for today. Definitely let me know if you think I'm right about Brendan exaggerating his friendship with Shane, or if you think he's actually being sincere. As always, if you like the video, then like the video, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. I appreciate you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.